What's up tricksters and tricksetters watching this video on the second YouTube channel? Today we have another tier 3 sub world review and we have Alex playing Raze on Sunset in Ascendant to Elo. I'm still sick as fuck, so I'm gonna be a bit slower, you know, like a bit more. It's not gonna be that enthusiastic video and coaching, but I'll try to do my job. Your job is to listen, to apply the tips, and that's it. Now, this is the first time we are world reviewing Alex. I don't remember e ever doing a world review for him. Uh, by the way, on my Discord server, one thing that I didn't mention, right now you have a giveaway for Valorant points, uh, free coaching, and uh, some extra coaching uh, content. Uh, join the Discord, enter the giveaways. If you win, you get a free, free stuff, basically. Uh, now... Let's first start with a, you know, with the questions. I've been Heartstick Ascendant since I've reached it in episode 6, act 1. Jesus Christ. Uh, I picked Ascendant, basically like, okay, let's talk about that immediately. Like, uh, uh, Ascendant 1 to Immortal 2 is medium elo in Valorant. The most important thing that you need to master in this elo is how to babysit your allies. Essentially, your gameplay cannot be focused only on yourself and enemies, but also you need to read the mind of your teammates. You need to compensate every single mistake that your teammates are definitely going to make uh, and that's basically it like in this elo uh obviously obviously pre-assuming that your mechanical skill game knowledge and decision decision making are already good enough for this elo so basically this is a babysitting elo envelopment like if you want to escape this elo you need to heavily focus on what your teammates are doing uh players in valorant are lacking communication a lot they're not always gonna tell you like uh what they're gonna do what type of for what type of a play they're going a lot of times in this elo players are extremely mentally unstable extremely like uh, undisciplined and you will need to compensate every single mistake that your teammates are making. Like, you need to recognize not only your own mistakes, mistakes of the enemies, but also you need to recognize the mistakes of your teammates and to correct them as soon as possible, either via communication or via your utility usage or via your better uh, positioning and team play. So, what you need to truly master in this elo is proper proper team play for ranked environment team play and mindset now uh, i picked ascendant 3 97 rank rating and after losing the rank up to immortal i gave up on ranked and played it for fun let's talk about that uh being close to reaching your peak rank. Uh, a lot of players lose their confidence and play extremely scared when close to their new peak. You need to remember to remember that rank doesn't define your skill and uh, at some point you will need to face even pro players in a ranked environment. Uh, basically, uh, when you're playing your rank up games, I don't be like if you're scared to queue, if you're scared about your rank, if you don't have confidence to play the game, it is better for you to not play it. Chill, fuck it. Like uh, make a second account. Try to get to that same elo with a second account so that you have nothing to lose. That can fix your confidence. Um, 
there are multiple other ways how this can be fixed. Like, I see a lot of the players in my coaching sessions, but also, like, uh, uh, generally in Valorant, uh, when they are really close to their dream rank, to their goal, or to their new peak, they're not playing the game in the same way that they would play it if that was not a rank-up game or they're not really close to their goal. This is absolutely normal for everyone. Like, I also, you know, I also have this feeling as well uh, sometimes when I'm close to Radiant, even though I got Radiant 21 time in this stupid game. Like, sometimes I feel like, you know, if I'm really try-harding, uh, giving it my all and stuff like that, and I'm like one or two matches away from Radiant, sometimes I play like a pussy, I'm not doing what I sh I I'm supposed to do, and I'm not playing my own game. Uh, there's multiple ways to fix this problem. Like, uh, as I said, like, uh, having multiple accounts, like, I have, like, around 24 accounts in Valorant, uh, and out of these 24 accounts, uh, 13 accounts, uh, on 13 accounts, I got Radiant. So one thing that helps me a lot is, like, uh, when I'm close to Radiant, or I'm, like, one or two games away, I just play on, uh, like, uh, I just play, like, uh, on my second account for a bit, to chill a bit, to regain my confidence, to you know, maybe play a bit of a duelist, focus on my aim, like, do something else, essentially. And then I'll come back on my main account after, like, maybe five, six, seven days, and then I will play with full fucking confidence. Also, when you're close to the rank, to specific rank, like, whenever you're feeling anxious to queue, you're feeling scared to queue, you're feeling that you don't have confidence, don't play Valorant. Just don't play it. Like, Valorant is the game of confidence, game of mentality, and mindset. Like, essentially, uh, if you're getting into the games with a wrong mentality and wrong mindset, you're already fucked. Your chances of winning is below uh, 40%. So, essentially, like, uh, that might have happened for you as well. Like, that you were that close, and then, like, you de-ranked uh, to, I don't know, Ascendant 1, Ascendant 2, and then you're starting your grind again. Uh, we'll see what happened for you in the tracker. I feel like my matches are... my mechanics are good enough to be an immortal, but my game sense isn't good enough to climb out. Basically, uh... Okay, let's talk about that. How to fix game sense. Like, uh, It's really hard to define what is actually the game sense, but uh, uh, I, I, I like, like, I, I, don't, I don't consider game sense as a skill set. Like, basically, in, in a game of Valorant, we only have nine skill sets. So what are these nine skill sets? In Valorant, we only have nine skill sets. And those nine skill sets are the following. Game knowledge. Uh, decision making. Team play. Adaptiveness. Uh, mechanical skill. Training and preparation. Uh, communica communication. Mentality. And attitude. So, essentially... Uh, I like I, I like to put game sense like a subtopic of adaptiveness. Like, what is adaptiveness? What is adaptiveness? Uh, it, adaptiveness is like a sum of your like map awareness, game knowledge, and uh, overall game awareness, like game sense essentially. Like, it is your ability to notice your own mistakes. To notice the mistakes of your teammates and mistakes of your enemies in the shortest amount of time possible and to fix those problems or to abuse them for a specific win condition or a win potential. Like, adaptiveness is your ability to recognize your win conditions and win potentials as soon as possible and to apply the absolutely fastest and the most precise game decisions in the shortest amount of time. So, 
how do you improve your adaptiveness? Adaptiveness is the the second, uh, the second, actually the third hardest skill to improve. In order to be more adaptive, to understand your win conditions and to be more aware of the game, like first of all, your game knowledge needs to be at ninety percent, like really fucking high. Like, you need to focus on understanding the maps, understanding the agents, uh, proper utility usage, proper economy management, uh, proper way to play the maps for ranked environment, how to play the first round, second round, third round, fourth round on every single map, understanding team compositions, understanding the strengths and weaknesses of uh, team compositions, tips, tricks, strategies, rules, etc., etc. Like, game knowledge and development pulls up everything else for you, and without high game knowledge, you're absolutely fucked in this game. Also, your adaptiveness gets uh, much better through self, through, through self analyzing and analyze and uh, analyzing other matches of other players. Like basically, Valorant is also a game of scenarios. So. In a game of Valorant, you're going to play around 3,000 scenarios on repeat, 24-7. Now, you might think that 3,000 scenarios is a lot. Like, it is not a lot. Like, compared to some other games, such as League of Legends, for an example. Like, uh, the only way to become more adaptive, to ba basically, like, uh, bring your game sense, your overall awareness on a higher level, is by learning every single day, 24-7. Analyzing why did we win or why did we lose a specific match. Analyzing why did we win, why did we lose a specific round. What are all the factors that are impacting your outcomes. It is really hard to improve the adaptiveness on your own and it takes a lot of time. Like essentially... Uh, essentially, like, uh, you know, even if, I, when, when I do one month coaching with, with, with players, that is like uh, 16 hours of coaching in total, even after one month of coaching, I'm not able to cover 30% of these scenarios in the game, through rules, tips, tricks, etc, etc. So that is why my coaching never stops, and I'm always offering 24-7 lifetime support, to all of the players that I'm coaching. Like, uh, I, I think I uh, I talked about in as the coach. Yeah, yeah, here, 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 here. Adaptiveness. Just a second. Eh, here. I have explained really in depth how to improve the adapt adaptiveness, your adaptability in Valorant, your game sense, essentially. And what are all of the factors that are impacting your improvement rate. So just read this uh, this thread, and it's gonna help you a lot with understanding a bit better, like, what do you actually need to do. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the easiest way to improve game sense, to improve the game knowledge, uh, is through extensive coaching. You know, like, uh, whenever I'm coaching the players in Valorant, uh, I'm gonna showcase you right now, like, uh, uh, just a second. Whenever I'm coaching the players in Valorant, uh, just a second, where will PvK? Look at this. So, you know, almost every single day, people are sending me these clips to analyze them, to review them for them. Like, we need to cover every single scenario for you in order for you to understand, like, uh, how to adapt to a specific scenario. But you can improve your adaptiveness on your own as well, like, as I said, like, through the water reviews, through self-analyzing, through all of the shit, like, like, uh, like that. Now, let me just see one thing. One moment. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, now, uh, I, 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 I IGL a lot 
of my games, but I feel like my calls are very basic and not enough to get me the wins. Uh, in ranked environment, so in ranked solo queue, like, you don't need to be IGL for your team. It is much better if your callouts are simple, quick, precise, and without some unnecessary complication. So, I would heavily recommend, like, it, it, that is totally fine. Like, I also don't communicate in my games, like, 90% uh, of times. I only communicate, like, what I see, what, what I want to do, where the fuck are the enemies, and if I really need some... In, 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 and if I really need some specific thing from my allies in order to win a specific round. Like, you don't need to... Like, IGLing in ranked is really fucking hard, because people, a lot of players are playing on the autopilot mode. They're not gonna listen to you. Uh, a lot of players are not gonna understand what you actually want from them. So it is much better to keep your comms very simple. Hey guys, let's push A, let's push B. Hey man, Gecko, can you give me a flash here? I'm gonna push this, and that's it. Like, never complicate your callouts and your IGLing to the degree of VCT players. It is impossible. All, all the way up to maybe like uh, top uh, 200 players in Valorant. It is impossible to IGL. Like, people don't give a fuck, essentially. And a lot of times, they're not gonna understand you what you're telling them to do. Keep it clean. Keep it, you know, like, ooh, Frost! Fuck. We, also, we almost got a copyright strike, man. Thank you a lot. So, keep it clean, keep it simple, and that's it. Now, uh, I also struggle with reading the enemy and adapting to their playstyle. Eh, that is a bit of a problem. You know, if you reached Ascendant, an immortal elo, and you're not able to read the enemies, and adapting to the enemy's playstyles, you're absolutely fucked. Like, that's why a lot of the players are hard stuck in Immortal and Ascendant, because you reach Immortal and Ascendant without improving these three skill sets right here. Mechanical skill, game knowledge, and decision making. Like, so sorry not sorry, but you cannot be an Ascendant or Immortal player and having a game knowledge of a silver player, having a mechanical skill of a silver player, and having a decision-making of a silver player. Uh, now, th these, I feel, are my main problems, but I'm sure there's a lot more things I'm doing wrong that you can point out. Okay, we'll, we'll figure it out together right now. Uh, let's see his track. So, my guy... I mean, like, first of all, you know, your playtime, you know, what is the, what is the optimal, best playtime in order to see consistent improvements at Valorant? Like, the only way to see, like, the... Uh, to see, like, the consistent improvements and to actually keep up with these kids that are playing 24-7 is playing three games of Valorant per day. Like, three games is the minimum optimal amount of games that you should be playing if you want to see consistent improvements and if you're actually serious about your grind. If you're playing less than three games, it's okay. You can play one or two as well. But, uh... uh th there is probably some kind of a kid living in the basement of his parents playing the game 24-7. Like, you're not on the equal field. So, essentially, we need to have around 180 games per an act. And spending at least one hour per day doing some kind of a practice. Practice can, you know, can be anything. You know, what reviewing, like uh, uh, analyzing other players, uh, custom server practice, uh, uh, aim training, uh, 
doing some kind of a routine in aim trainers, warm up, that type of stuff. Uh, one one thing that I want to mention here is why why is training and preparation a skill set actually? Because a lot of the players in Valorant don't understand what is a good, bad, and optimal training and preparation. A lot of you guys. I would say that 80% of the players that have coached were just wasting their time. Absolutely. I mean, any practice and any training that you do is going to be optimal. It's going to be okay. It's not going to hurt you. But a lot of the players can do much better training and preparation in a much more efficient way to see faster improvements and faster like growth as a player. That's why this is also a skill set. Why am I talking about this? Because your playtime isn't really that uh, <clears throat> that good, to be honest. You know, we can definitely see a boost in your hours, but you know, you probably have a real life job. Valorant is not your job. Even with this playtime, this is this is okay. I mean, with this playtime, you can reach Immortal Three this act without uh, Immortal Three uh, next act without any problems. And maybe until the end of this year, with this playtime, you can reach Radiant if you really try hard and if you keep your win rate at fifty-five to fifty-six percent uh, every single act. Uh, but you need to remember that you know. Basically, you know, you, you have a suboptimal playtime in Valorant. Now, let, I, I want to check, like, uh, when he was really close to Ascendant. Uh, how do I check that, actually? Ascendant 3? So, I don't know, like, where, where, where he was close to reaching Immortal. Maybe somewhere here. There, there's no way for me to know... To know which game that is. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, this is a hardstock player. Definitely. I mean, if, if you spend in one rank more than uh, one whole episode, you're a hardstock player. Like, basically, if you spend in one act uh, in between three to six months, uh, seek for the help, uh, change something, like, you cannot just run in the circles. And do the same shit that is not working for you. Which is what a lot of the players actually do. Now, your statistics are really good. Damage per round, not noise. KD, noise. Herschel percentage, everything is noise. The only thing that is really fucking you up here is your KST. Like, all of these statistics... Right here. Don't matter at all if your KST is above, is below 75%. Especially if you're playing a duelist. That means that you're taking the fights that you should not take. You're maybe dying in some kind of a stupid way that you should not die in. Your refrag game is very poor. You're not a refragable teammate. When you're executing the bomb sites and your pathing is bad, there, there's a lot of things that can actually be bad. Uh, everything else is like, yeah, <clears throat> we need to stay more alive and control like the the outcome of our rounds. Like uh, basically, listen here. It is much better in a game of Valorant if you win. A 13-11 match with a 13-11 score instead of having a 19-16 score. It is much better losing a 14-16 match with 14 kills and 16 deaths instead of having 25 kills and 24 deaths. It is much better winning a 13-7 match with 13 impactful kills that actually matter for closing out the round, instead of winning a 13-7 match with 19 kills and 13 fucking deaths. Like, essentially, 
a lot of the players, especially a lot of the players in Ascendant and Immortal Lobby. All you guys see is fight, 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 blood, blood, kill, kill, kill. Like, chill a bit, you know? Like, like you need to play Valorant like you're working a 9 to 5 job. So, you clock in at 9, what is your job? My job is to basically make the numbers advantage, play on that numbers advantage, play with my teammates, be a refragable teammate, refrag my allies, close out the rounds, and that's it. When you do your job, done. Chill a bit. You know, play primarily on the contact between enemies and your allies, close out the rounds, and that's it. Like, you will see, even when I'm, I mean, smurfing, like, whatever, like, uh, I'm not really the best smurf alive because my mechanical skill is not that good, but uh, uh, even if I'm playing in Ascendant, Diamond, and Immortal Lobbies, you will see that I'm not dropping like 30 kills, 40 kills, 25 kills. Most of the games I have like between 15 to maximum 25 kills, but I have a very low amount of deaths. I'm only focused on closing out the rounds, winning the games, and I don't give a shit if I win a match with 40 kills or 15 kills. All that matters for me is that I'm gonna do everything that is required for me to do to win a specific round, to win a specific game, and I'm out. Moving on to the next match. Now, I can see that you're primarily a duelist main. Uh, judging from your overall statistics, uh, from the first bloods and some other statistics, duelists seem, you know, duelists suit you quite well, to be honest. Omen as well. But Omen, you're really fucking good, actually. Even though you played only seven matches. Very good, very good. Not bad, not bad. Listen, man. I would actually advise you, get the fuck away from all of this shit right here. Fuck this shit. Let's make a pact. Let's make a deal. So from now on, you're only going to main five, four agents. What should you main on different maps up to Immortal 3? So this is up to Immortal 3. Let's let's start first with uh, with uh, you know his win rate. Just a second. So here ascent. Let's start with the ascent. So on ascent, you have a really high win rate with the jet. No problem. We can just stick to the jet as our main pick. Our secondary flex pick can be omen, and our fill picks can be raise and chamber. I think Omen is gonna help you a lot with your uh, game sense problem in Valorant. Like, Omen is generally the best agent for players' solo improvement and for players' improvement of their skill sets. Like, essentially, Omen is teaching you everything about Valorant. But literally everything. Every single one of these skill sets are being tackled once you master the Omen. So, I can easily recommend you to keep the Omen in your roster, try to focus more on playing Omen, but of course, Jet, Raze, and Chamber can also be your main characters. Like, don't, you know, stop doing this. Like, what the fuck is this shit? You know, why, why are you playing Deadlock, Gecko, Chamber, I mean Sky, Phoenix, Viper, Sova, Cypher? Reina. What the fuck, bro? Let's focus on ma truly mastering two agents, having two alternative picks up to Immortal 3, and that's it. Like, when can you say? When can you say that you've mastered a specific agent in Valorant? When you have at least 300 to 500 hours on that specific agent. If you have less than 300 to 500 hours 
on one agent. You didn't master that character. Like, you didn't play enough scenarios, enough games, to actually understand what to do with that agent in every single scenario. Like, there is not a single agent on which you have more than 300 hours. Let's focus only on four picks, because you don't have that much time to play the game, and let's fuck everything else. Now, moving to the maps again. Ice cooks. Uh, on ice cooks, I would recommend you the following. Icebox. <clears throat> on icebox, we're going to keep jet as your main pick. Your chamber is going to be flex pick, and omen and raise are going to be fill picks. Lotus. On lotus. Uh, on Lotus, you you can play both Raze and Jet as main agents, and Chamber and Omen can be your flex picks if you really need to fill for your team, or the Jet and Raze are locked in. On Breeze, I would recommend you to keep uh, Jet as your main pick, Chamber as a flex, and that's it. You don't need anything else. <clears throat> you literally don't need anything else. To carry the matches on Breeze, like... Jet is insta-locked. No problem. Lock the chamber, carry the match. It's a very simple map. Uh, even if you don't have a controller on that... Nobody fucking cares. This map is all about the duels, mechanical skill, proper positioning, uh, proper way of isolating the duels, paying attention on overexposure, that type of stuff. Bind. On bind, what I would actually recommend you is to immediately start picking Omen as a main character, Jet and Raze as a flex pick, and Chamber as a fill. Now, Omen on, 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 on bind. Bro, you have the access on my Discord server to my ranked playbook in the Agent's Guides. I've fully covered bind with Omen. If you replicate Everything that I've mentioned in that playbook, <coughs> you will have a 60, 60 to 70% win rate on bind up to Immortal 3. I guarantee you. Unless you have some really, like, uh, I don't know, stupid teammates. Especially because your overall mechanical skill is quite okay. Not too shabby, like, I mean... 26% headshot ratio, 114 KD, 160 ADR. Very good, very good, very good. Uh, on Sunset, uh, uh, listen, this is what I would recommend you on Sunset. I would actually recommend you to play Raze and uh, Raze and uh, Chamber as your main picks and Jet and Omen as a flex picks and on split jet main uh omen raise flex and chamber fill so let's make a pact uh from now on you're not gonna play 25 agents in valorant 24 you're going to play four agents completely master these agents up to Immortal 3 and dominate in every single scenario that you play. Your playtime is not good enough to play every fucking character in the game. You know, you're not a streamer, you're not a content creator, you never got Radiant. We don't need to go to that extent. Now, uh, <sighs> yo, Eco Rounds, horrible, bro. Like, in Eco Rounds, I mean, Eco Rounds are okay, like, but it can be better. It can be better. Uh, another thing that I would definitely recommend you, you need to have a better variety, be better weapon variety. Fuck the Spectre, Stinger is better, remove the Spectre, Spectre is only useful in a second round on some of the maps, Stinger is better in every other fucking round. Uh, Outlaw, you're playing Raze, Chamber, Jet, and Omen. How do you have 7 kills with Outlaw? On 95% of the maps, 
You're playing a second antique round. You're buying the outlaw with a light shield or heavy shield. It's an it, it's literally such a broken weapon, such an easy weapon to get a kills, especially in the bonus round as well. On a defender side of 90% of the maps in Valorant. Implement more. Outlaw when the enemies are eco, hal by, bonus, that type of shit. <coughs> Everything else is like, okay, I mean, definitely, you know, Shorty should be your, if you're already maining Jet, Raze, and Omen, Shorty should always be your primary, secondary weapon, whenever you have the money to afford the Shorty. And everything else is like, okay, whatever. Uh, one thing that I would also, also suggest you is... Uh, uh, your Phantom is 10 to 20% better than a Vandal. Maybe you should consider maining Phantom instead of the Vandal, because the difference between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 is actually quite a lot, if you put it in, a pers in the in-game perspective. And, uh, I don't know. Like, I would give Phantom a, a try, you know, on the maps where Phantom is actually good, like obviously not on, on Breeze, on Breeze you need to play the Vandal because it's a really fucking long range map, obviously. I don't know if, if any other act you had a more playtime on Phantom. Nothing here. You're mainly, but, but, but with the Phantom you're, you're dealing so much more damage and usually taking more kills. I don't know, man. I, I, I'll definitely give a Phantom a try, like... Uh, I mean, obviously, you should master both of these weapons, you know? It really doesn't matter if you're playing Vandal or Phantom. It's all a personal preference. The only map on which you need to main one weapon over another is, unfortunately, the Breeze. Like, on Breeze, you need to... You need to play a long-range weapons that have a... wanted potential on every single, you know, range. Uh, but other than that, this is okay. This is fine. Okay, so those are my recommendations based on your questions and based on the tracker that we saw right now. Now, we can instantly move into the last part of this VOD review, which is actually the VOD review. <clears throat> I hate using Fanta because I start to crouch spray with it. Uh, kinda easy problem to fix, no. Just don't crouch spray. You know, force yourself into a better habit. It's gonna take you like three or four weeks to fix that habit in deathmatch, practice range, TDM, and in game. But I don't know, like your statistics with the Phantom are 10 to 20% better than with the Vandal, which can be significant when you put it in, a, in the in game perspective. Imagine getting like uh, 10 to 20% more kills. I don't know, man. I, I, I would give it a shot. Like this act, I, 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 I started using Phantom instead of the Vandal. And I must say that uh, uh, the weapon suits me much, much better than, than, uh, than the Vandal, actually. But to be honest, like I'm playing... Like shit, this sex, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, okay, uh, these are the notes. Uh, let's dive into a what? Why did I remove the what? Raise Sunset. Uh, when it comes to playing Raise on Sunset, obviously, Raise is a meta pick on Sunset. You don't need to follow meta in ranked environment, like, literally, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, team compositions usually don't matter at all. Better team will always win. Uh, it's more what you prefer as a player. Like, some players prefer Jet, Raise, Yoru. Like, it's really up to you. Uh, 
but yeah, we'll see what, what you're doing here. 30 seconds left. <laughs> that looks like oil? <laughs> you mean this? <laughs> I, I might be drinking oil as well. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, I don't want to hear that for another time. Just a second. Uh, let's put this on... I don't know, like... Whatever, like... C. Doesn't matter. Swap the team. Let's start. Okay. Uh, let's quickly go back on the on the topic of IGLing in rank solo queue. Uh, when is IGLing actually good? And when you should give the comms to your teammates and navigate your teammates on both macro and micro level. First round on the attacker side, first round on the defender side, every single anti eco round, every single hull by round, force by round, or bonus round, or eco round, and uh, in the full by rounds, when you have an idea how to counter the enemies. In other rounds, you don't need to, you don't need to say anything, you can just adapt to your teammates and follow. You know, just adapt on the scenarios that are in front of you. So in the first round of Sunset, how do we decide what to do? So Sunset is, number one, a fast rotation map. That's going to be important for us on a defender's side. Uh, B site is our default site and number one priority. A site, number two priority. And basically mid, number three priority on the attacker's side. Now, uh, how do we decide <clears throat> what to do in the first round? Enemies don't have a cipher. Three rounds in a row, push the B site. In the fourth round, fake B, go A. Simple. I've explained this method and I explained everything about this in the previous VOD review on cipher. Uh, now, enemies do have a cipher in their team composition. Three rounds in a row, push the A site. In the fourth round, fake A, go B. Done. I've explained why we are doing this in the previous VOD review. Watch that VOD review. It is the 83rd VOD review, cipher on ascent in gold elo. Now, uh, with a raise in the first round on ascent, on sunset, I will always buy Classic, Light Shield, two satchels, and an eight. Now, let's see what we're gonna do. What you're gonna do in the first round? This is this is a bit of a death sentence, to be honest. Like, uh, this is a huge gamble, uh, especially if you don't destroy the trip wires on the site with an eight or with a satchel, or if I if our KO doesn't find the cipher with a knife, we're absolutely fucked. This is a instantly one mistake. So, when we are pushing B main area of the map, how do we push and clear the B main area of the map? We tell our cipher, cipher, can you use a camera here? Spot the enemies in the main. You don't have a cipher. Okay, no problem. We're running forward, jump spotting the enemies, you see the enemies there, you can push them away with a nade, or you can just ignore them and push here and try to contest them from this location. Always clear this spot, clear these off angles here, path like this, clear this position, and then move in. Also, if your teammates, if your, if your enemies are heavily contesting your teammates, in the main area of the map, it is to totally fine if you do, do a jiggle throw nade, because this nade, not only that is gonna push the enemies back and make you safely path through this area of the map, but also you're potentially gonna destroy the cyphers tripwire that is usually there. Uh, if your teammates are not clearing 
that position there, and you think enemies can be there, it's okay to do this. Like, I will do everything in my capability so that my teammates are not dying. Here and here as we are pathing towards the A site and towards the B site. Every single death that we have here and here is a pointless death that can be prevented with proper pathing, angle clearing, and utility usage. We need to... <coughs> okay. No choke, by the way. This is exactly uh, what I was talking about at the, at the start of this word review. Like, what the fuck is this? Can you tell me? Like, it is the first round. We don't know how much we can trust our teammates. You know, you don't know with who the fuck you're playing. You don't know who you're playing against right now. Why the fuck, in a 4v3 numbers advantage, with a spike being planted, are we contesting the enemies alone in the CT position? In this scenario here, how would I play it? So, no one is holding the market for me. I'm gonna hold this from this position. As my jet is pathing to contest the enemies in the CT position, I'm gonna path as well. Like, there is absolutely no way that I would trust my teammates with anything in rank solo queue in the first four rounds. Like, in the first four rounds in Valorant, on both attack and defense, you need to have 120% focus. We need to see how much we can trust our teammates with specific tasks, and also to see if we can abuse enemies in some kind of a way. It is much better to start your matches in Valorant with a pessimistic take where, you know, every, every single match in Valorant has started with this mindset. My teammates are mentally retarded until they, until they prove me wrong. You know? Like, my teammates are s slowly building up my trust. And then in the fifth round, I'm asking myself, based on the data and based on information that I got from the first four rounds on both attackers and defenders side, how much I can trust my teammates. Like, can I go for these, for some more risky place? Uh, do I need to stay more alive? Uh, do I need to stay alive in the post plans, in the retakes? Shit like that. This is absolutely unnecessary push. Not sure, by the way. Especially with four bullets, at least you should have reloaded before you contested the enemies more. Okay. Uh, now, the reason <clears throat> why I prefer Stinger over the Spectre is the following. In the long-range gunfights, Stinger is better than Spectre if you can control the triple shot burst fire. But it's very easy to control it, like you just pull down right and the bullets are gonna go almost to the center. Second reason why I prefer the Stinger is because it is far more... It is far better weapon on these claustrophobic rounds uh, in a bonus round. Like, it has lower time to kill than a, than a Spectre. Uh, against the enemies that are full by. Uh, and the third reason is obviously economy value. Like it's only 1100 credits. Compared to the stupid Spectre that is 1600 credits. And since the run and gun potential of the Spectre got nerfed a bit. I would always recommend players like. In a second round if you want to buy a Spectre. Just learn how to play a fucking Stinger to be honest. Okay. 
Especially if you notice that your teammates are swinging those type of angles in the main area of the map, like monkeys, like this. Please, always run in front of your teammates, gather the information by jump spotting the enemies, bait some of the shots from the enemies, and then go in a fight. I, I never, I, like the first thing that I hate to see in my private coaching sessions is players doing this. You, you don't know where are the enemies. Like one enemy can already be there, there. Like a uh, enemy omen could have teleported on the left side, peeking. Like you don't know what type of an angle the guy is holding there. Like why? Well, 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 like are are you? Do you do you want to die that much? Get the information for your crosshair placement for your teammates as well, and then peek out, clear the angles methodically one by one. This push that you did here was also mega dangerous. Like, instead of using this boom bot, so look at this. We're pushing. Okay, I got a kill. Instead, instead of doing this boom bot on the right side, I would actually do a boom bot for the box, clear this angle, and then path forward. Because enemy omen did a really deep smoke, and he... One enemy can easily be here. Why? Because we don't have a cipher camera. None of your teammates use the utility to clear this position. It is always better to be safe rather than sorry. Clear all of the angles and then go for some kind of fun execute. Nobody, literally nobody in your team clear this position here. And one enemy could have been there, based on the timing that they had. Like, you can walk up from this position to this position easily, without being noticed. Reyna was contesting you in a fight, so you didn't see this position at all. Omen could have done this easily, and hide in this position, based on the timing. Also, okay, now Jet cleared it, actually. Okay. They don't have any flags, but they get on. Let's fight this. Let's fight this. One enemy remaining. Satchel out. Satchel out. Team A. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Any of the round was fine. I'm just gonna give you one more tip. <clears throat> uh. What is your goal in anti-eco rounds? Obviously, your main goal is winning that round. Like, you know, doing everything that you need to do to win that eco round, you know. But your secondary goal is winning that round with the least amount of casualties. Just a second, just a second. <coughs> Moment. <laughs> okay. Now. Uh, so, basically, when I'm playing antique rounds, when we take a site, plan the spike. I'm not hunting more kills. Basically, in Counter-Strike, obviously, in an anti eco round, you want to hunt the kills, because kills give you more money with a MAC-10, with a UMP, that type of shit, SMGs. In Valorant, it means nothing. So my goal in anti eco rounds is doing everything that I need to do to win that stupid fucking round. But my secondary goal is winning that round with the least amount of casualties possible. I don't want my teammates to lose the weapons. I want to have a good weapons for the bonus round and have a good I have a amazing economy for the fourth round and fifth round as well. And also my third goal is saving my own weapon 
for a bonus round, which is gonna give me higher chances of winning that round. Because right now, if you died in this round, what would have you bought in the next round? Well, probably a Sheriff with a Heavy Shield and that's it. That's what most players do. Why? Why, why are we damaging our economy for, for some stupid kills? Like, also, in the first four rounds of Valorant, you should be hyper-focused on making sure that your teammates, that your team is building a proper economy for the rest of the game. Done. Now, I can never trust a flash. Uh, pushing the B-set again. Okay, game decision. Like, uh, you know, we are creating that unpredictable pattern of pushing. We can push B in this round. Then in the next round, we push... We fake B, go A. All good. I want to ask him for a flash, but I feel like he's going to blind me. Oh. Please, instead of uh, chit-chatting with your teammate, with your... Whoever the fuck are you talking about right now? Buy the fucking utility. Like, where are the satchels and boombot? You have a, in the next round. In the next round, you have like how many credits? Yesterday or something. The cipher hasn't went until they stop this. We're gonna just do the same thing until it doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, I can never trust Moment, 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 moment. Bro, I hate having kills. So in the next round, my guy... Never mind, he didn't open the buy menu. At all. Like... <clears throat> bro. Stop talking. Focus more on the important things to win this round. Like, first buy the weapons, then talk. You know, get ready for a round. What what, what, what the fuck is this? This on my team. I oh, I forgot about you too. Hi. <laughs> Bro, I'm selling. I always you must. Listen, man. Uh, even if you want to do the nade, right here. Like, always. So, look at my path into the B main area of the map. Without any utility. Jump spotting enemies here. Peeking that angle. This angle. Jiggle peeking this position. Then peeking the site. Checking this spot, that's it. Like this angle, I would never peek with utility in my hands. You don't know if Jet is maybe playing some off angle like this, wa waiting for you to cross, bam, dashing out with a kill. You don't know if she's maybe playing some kind of a shit like this, bam, dashing out with a kill. Like, uh, you not peek out with utility in your hands, especially because you saw that Reyna and Jet actually played aggro in the B main in the last two rounds. I broke trip. Flashing back slash. Yep. He's not playing. Ooh. Flashing back slash. Yep. Uh, this is... I don't know. Like... I would... You know, I... <laughs> I don't like hidden sighting, you know? I usually like predicting what's gonna happen in a specific round and telling you how the rounds are gonna pan out based on my experience. Like, in this round, I would've probably died in the same way that you died. Like, you did everything right, okay, you know? Like, your teammates should've been holding that angle, like KO and, uh, and this claw. Plus, the guy got semi-fleshed. Like, it's a bullshit. In a game of Valorant, 40% of the fights, 40% of the rounds, and 40% of matches are simply out of your control. This is just a luck factor maximum for Reyna. Done. It's, not black it's okay. <clears throat> Listen, the reason why we push three rounds in a row, the same bomb site, is so that we can fake pushing that site in the fourth round. Like we are damaging the enemy's mentality on B site, making them rotate faster in the future rounds. And 
that's that, 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 that's why you push three rounds in a row B side. You didn't push B side because it worked two times. Like when the map design allows you, and economy allows you, and team compositions to push the same site three rounds in a row. In the first three rounds, we do that, and then in the fourth round, it's always a fake on B, fake on that site, and we are pushing the opposite site. Like right now, what we could have done is like KO can use a knife for the for the B main. You can use a boom bot for the B main. KO can use a flash for the B main. Claw uses a smoke for the market, and then we go A. Easy. Yeah, yeah, I can. Sight sight would be clear. So Literally no push. nobody would have been on yeah, site. Oh, okay, one one extra tip, like uh, so. This angle is a bit deeper than it actually looks like. Like when when you're going here and jiggle picking this and clearing these angles, this angle, like you stop clearing this angle at this moment of time, and then you switch here, like because of this fucking wall and this position here, you know. Angle is, is slightly deeper than it actually looks like. So make sure that you see this corner fully before you switch your focus towards the elbow. Like just do, you know, we're pathing through here. Check this angle, move forward, you know, check this position fully and then press forward into the elbow. Please, for the love of God, implement a good habit of clearing every single position that you're approaching, no matter how many of your teammates are in front of you, no matter what type of uh, utility your teammates are using. He in this example, yes, we killed one enemy here. But how do you know that one enemy is not here? Maybe this guy was baiting for this guy. If I'm pushing the A set of Sunset, I'm gonna clear this myself. This, 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 backside, uh, and that's it. And then, you know, like, we don't need anything else, like, depends, like, you know, what your teammates want to do if they want to push the enemies in, in A short and CT. But these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven angles, I'm going to clear myself always. On B side, this this, 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 and the backside, and then I can live a happy life and, you know, adapt to my teammates. And of course, the top of the box here, even if this, if this is smoked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whenever I'm pathing through any position, I always make sure to check every fucking possibility and every angle from which enemies can kill us. <coughs> oh, okay. Let's see this one one more time. Oh, okay. where? Spike down, A. I mean, you know, generally speaking, like you should always prioritize fighting in the fights that you know that you're gonna fight. Like, that, that is one rule that I that I follow. I don't know how to explain this a bit better. Like, uh, you know. If I know that one enemy is definitely here, you know, and I have no information whether or not some enemy is here, I'm not gonna wait for, you know, I'm not gonna stay here and wait for this enemy to maybe peek me and end up in some kind of a fucking sandwich from these two positions. Especially if I'm in the numbers disadvantage. Like, in these type of scenarios, like, when you're exposed from two different angles, it's always better to pick a fight 
with an enemy that you know about, especially if your spike is dropped in that area of the map and your remaining teammate is also there, and just, you know, use your satchel to engage this guy, try to kill the gecko, and that's it. Instead of staying in the middle of nowhere for such a long period of time, be assuming that one enemy will maybe push the CT position. But what what is the main problem of this round? We didn't use the fake strategy. Like you like trust me. Like fourth round is the free round in ranked environment 80% of times. If you push seven times in a row, three times in a row, the same bomb site. And you fake that bombsite in the fourth round. 80% of times it is a fucking free round. Push the beam in, push the beam in. Um, okay, I can get you knives if you... Or was that marker? I'm gonna take bombs Try to get it, get knives, get knives. Push it. Oh my. Nice, nice, nice. I want that gun. I got a gun for someone. Who wants it? Take it, take it. Can you smoke? I'm gonna need it back here. Listen. Uh, always. Always prioritize. Pushing the ASAP primarily through the elbow position. Without the elbow control, it is mega giga hard. To push onto the A site. And uh, and it, your executes are also much cleaner, much easier. Like, you don't need to do anything extra. Especially if your spike is going through the elbow. Fuck the short. You don't need it. Like, just come in, into elbow. Clear all of these angles. Enemies are gonna smoke you here, no problem. Use a nade for the back site or somewhere. And then, one satchel, bam, you're already on the site. One satchel, bam... You're already on the site. Like one satchel, we have a smoke there. Bam, we're already on the site. There's no one here. We can maybe use a nade to pressure the enemies there. And we're clearing one angle at a time. The problem here is like, you know, there's so many possibilities that you need to expect. Like one enemy can be playing this fucking angle like a stupid idiot. Enemy can be here. Enemy can be here. Enemy can be on sight. Enemy can be peeking you through the smoke on timing. One enemy can be hiding here, waiting for you to W, you know, key into the site, killing you on timing. There's just so many more opportunities that the enemies have to actually kill you. Nice. <clears throat> nice. One, one thing that I noticed in this first, like, uh, few rounds is your map awareness is kinda a bit, huh? Here and there. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. What's the Like, like enemy remaining. And once again, I know, I know, I, I know that it is like, uh, five versus one. But isn't it better? To win this round with five teammates alive, five guns, beautiful economy, instead of winning this round by giving the Reina potential one, two, three, four kills and losing over fifteen thousand credits. Like, like I'm, I'm really focused. Like, like there are two things that I'm mega focused when I'm playing the game of Valorant. Building a proper economy for myself and my team, so I can have as many rounds as possible. The full bison and useful weapons. And closing out the rounds in the easiest way possible, with the least amount of casualties. Like, you need to be more focused on that concept and that mindset, especially in this elo where you're playing right now. What's the... Like, enemy remaining. like here, instead of swinging Reyna in this fight, 
We could have just chilled a bit. Wait to see where she is. Aha. Uh -huh. Claw. Sees that Reyna is here. Search all the Reyna. Bam. Get her out of the server, man. Okay, even though Cypher is playing. I mean, like... One tip I need to give you is uh, whenever you notice that enemies are not fighting aggressively for the aiming area of the map with a sm one way smoke, uh, paranoia, their utility, go away. Like, basically, you know, you have a free main control, free elbow control most of the time, and that's it. Especially if you have the raise ultimate, like, you know. We take the elbow, we take the... This, if one guy is stuck here... You get that guy... On Haven. You know? Like you... Uh, uh -huh. Trip to Haven. Get it. Uh, this, this is what I'm talking about. Like, what the fuck is this, bro? Listen. Whenever, like, you cannot do... You, you cannot do this. What the fuck is this pathing utility users like? Listen, on sunset, if your teammates are not using any utility to clear this, you're forced to use a boombot for that spot. Literally forced. Like if KO is not using a knife, uh, you don't have a sky, the drone, cypher camera, like, we need to clear that position. Like, uh, in the first three, you know, three to four times, Actually, two or three times when your teammates are pushing beam in. If you notice they're not having a proper utility to clear that angle. Fuck it, man. Always use your boombot for that spot. And then press forward. It, it is not worth dying from this position ever. And it is such a preventable problem. I think it's three here now. Here, there's three here, yeah. Green and J. Flank, flank, let's flank. Move out the way. Oh, I fucked up. TP, TP. Nice. They're mid, I think. Is it? Uh, personally, I don't know what to tell you about this you know, round and decision making. Like, what I would have done, I would have used the ultimate to kill the. to kill the jet. That was in the beam in. Like here, when the jet dashed away, I would have used the ultimate and satchels to kill the jet, get into the site, open the site for my team, and that's it. I don't know. Like, we can instantly trade the numbers, go from 4 versus 5 to 4 versus 4. There's gonna be probably only two remaining enemies on the bomb site. We're fighting 4 versus 2. On the bomb site, and uh, also like with the ultimate, you're probably gonna destroy ninety percent of the trip wires on the B set of sunset. Like, I don't know. Like, it's it's also okay what you did here once you got the information that Omen is behind you and he got uh, tripped, but. Uh, Uh, you guys not wanna come in. I don't know. Is it? Uh, okay. 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 The rest of the round was fine, like, I mean, there's nothing better you could have done. But, uh, I'm gonna give you one tip. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna give you a tip. Uh... Try to follow more the 20 seconds rule on attacker's side. Now, the 20 seconds rule, I have explained, uh, uh, watch my uh, 83rd WOD review on the second YouTube channel. In the first round of that VOD, I'm explaining this specific rule. 
you will understand why I'm telling you to do this. Like this, this rotation that we did here was a bit unnecessary. Instead of rotating from B to A, we could have just cut the noise for 20 seconds and rehit the B site. Make the enemies overthink. Make the enemies scatter on the map, lose their focus. Maybe they're gonna peek you in the B main and you get an easy kill instead of doing this rotation. Basically, in, in rank solo queue, the more rotations you do on the attacker side, the higher are the chances that your teammates are gonna die because of some kind of a factor or luck or timing. It is just stupid. And this is a bit of unnecessary rota over, over rotation, especially after killing that omen that was behind you. Because that kill on Omen is naturally going to make the enemies rotate more towards the A site and mid. And after 20 seconds, I think that you will be pushing maximum against like uh, one or... <clears throat> Even if you're pushing against two enemies, who cares? You're four versus two. You know, it's good. Hey. I feel like these, these rotations like this, like, you know, these blind rotations... Are just uh, such a unnecessary thing in players' gameplay. Like there is no reason to rotate this much. Uh, like sixty to seventy percent of times, when you guys rotate, it is a pointless rotation. There, there was no reason to do it. And also, it's a, it adds it just adds another layer and another factor that you need to think about. There's no time. Sorry, pushing us again. Can we have some people watching mid then? I don't want to. Careful, cross. No I'm gonna molly it. Grab his orb, yeah. Grab his orb, yeah. Okay. Do we know our sent for that? Oh my mm. god. Do we know our sent for that? Oh my uh, listen, when you're jump spotting, <clears throat> when you're jump spotting, like, uh, you know, yes, the, the, the main job of jump spotting is to bait the shots of the enemies. But the second job of jump spotting is to reveal the enemies as well. Like, if I'm jump spotting that B side from B main, I'm gonna do this. I wanna make sure that I see this angle, this off angle. That position and that position. Like, what the fuck is this? You don't see anything. I would expose my body a bit more and then contest the enemies in a fight. And also, I don't know, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what is this, bro? Like, like why are you playing so close to the wall? Crouching down? Like, what, what are we doing? What is this angle clearing, peeking, holding? Like, what? what you know this is stupid and bad. Here we need to dual peek the angles, go in and out, uh, wait to see where the enemies are, get the information with utility, jumps for the enemies, that type of shit. Like, I don't know. Oh my gosh! Very poor movement there. All five of them without. Listen, as I said, like. Uh, in the first four rounds, you need to gather some kind of information about the enemies and what they, they are and what they are not doing on a specific map. Like, uh, on Sunset, if enemies are not fighting aggressively for the aim and control and they're giving you aim and elbow for free, put more focus on A-site. Like, defending A-site without elbow and main control is cancer man literally let's try to play towards mid this run get out of my way oh we need to have the gun out of our hands here brother if i'm pushing the tiles like uh i'm not doing this like, uh, you know, I'm starting the round by walking. As soon as I get this angle, jiggle pick this, clear this, clear this, move forward. Well, you never know what type of timing enemies can get. 
Plus, if the enemies use a smoke here... Brother... We need to have the gun out. Jumping mid, uh, yeah. They're smoking mid. They did two smokes on mid. Can you flash mid, actually? Bro. They did two smokes on mid. And you heard an enemy rotating from A to B. Fuck the flash on mid. Let's go A! Uh, you want me to flash to yeah, the smoke? Yeah, oh, the smoke's going down away. Oh, we- oh, What the- What was this? What was this call-out? I don't know. There are three. Oh, three. Uh, I was- I'm gonna Bro, enemies and like, like, <sighs> listen. If, if an enemy controller wastes all of his smokes for a mid area of the map, just just execute a site immediately. They don't have a smoke to stop you at the choke points. You also heard a guy rotating from A to B. Like, that gave you all of the information to just push the base site. Here, after after seeing those two smokes, and her, hearing an enemy rotating from A to mid, I'm out. Big mid, uh, yeah. They're smoking mid. Can you flash mid? It's so hot in here, man. This room is... Uh, you want me to flash yeah. to the smoke? <coughs> Oh, we- Oh, there's three! And I hear- Some? I'm not sure where to try, bro. I'm not sure I'm going mid again. You're feeling lost here. Mainly because of your game knowledge. And understanding the maps in Valorant. Like, how are you feeling lost? In this match. Your A pushes were usually clean. Enemies don't know how the fuck to defend the A side. Enemies are not contesting you with a paranoia and one-way smoke and utility in the aim and area of the map. What's the problem? Gekko is not using a pop flash to stop your push. How are you feeling lost? Like, <clears throat> you're feeling lost only because of poor game knowledge. Nothing else. Okay. Like, take a look. You know, one thing that is <clears throat> heavily gonna help you out with uh, feeling more confident on the maps and understanding the maps a bit better is go on my Discord server go at the agent guides watch every single video that I've made on Jet that's it and try to analyze more like you know every single day you, you can try to analyze like one high ELO player or Radiant player Playing your agent on a specific map. See how the people usually play on that map, like what they do, and what you are not doing. And what you can implement within your gameplay. I mean, I this for info if we get smoked up. On the left side. Bomb, buddy out. Nice, nice. That's Cypher. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna knife you. Okay. No one's close. You okay? Can you walk up with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, I'm nice. on the okay. I'm gonna tip in mid, I think. I'm gonna go marker or something. Perfectly executed. Okay. Team. This one was good. This one was good. That's left side. This, this this jump peak from the smoke was kind of cancerous. I mean, like, there is no reason to jump peak this spot. You can just run out sideways from the smoke. I don't know what was that. Here, I completely understand that he got distracted by the boom bot and, you know. That's why you stop holding the market angle. Nice, nice. That's Cypher dead. When you were pushing in, 
this nade was really good to take more space from the enemies, especially because your jet got a kill in the B main. Very good. Not now, close. aggressively contesting the enemies here, a bit unnecessary, but you have a support from your KO, so even if you die, this KO should be uh, uh, able to refrag you at this moment of time. So, very good round, solid, 9 out of 10, hey, can you walk up nothing me? to shit about. Good usage of the satchels. Very good. No, I, I, I cannot believe that we are still pushing mid and B site, and A site is open as my butthole, man. And that side, then we should be able to boom bot, man. Alright. Do, do you ever learn from your mistakes? Huh? Like, here. If one round I die from that spot, or anywhere in the main area of the map, I will be clearing all of this with a high caution. Now you can die once again from the left side. I don't know if Keo gave, gave you a call out that he's gonna use a malt of there, but I, will, I don't know. Listen, it, it, it is kind of stupid to use a boom bot for the B main if you're already going to use the nade for the for the tripwires. It is much better if you just use a nade instantly then, like this. And most of the times, you know, you're gonna push this enemy backwards. The tripwire is gonna be destroyed, and that's it. Yes, I know that the tripwire that is placed, like, here is not gonna be destroyed, but fuck it. Because we're wasting two pieces of utility that have the same purpose. Or just, you know, use your nade. I don't know. Is there any any roof up here, like, that, 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 that we can use? But, uh, like, there's just way too much utility, like, uh, to just pressure the enemy's back and to destroy the tripwires. I think that this is this is much much more efficient and better. Casual casual raise ultimate. Uh, good ultimate, good reaction, everything was fine. Unlucky. I don't know how that just survived. Nice, nice. Oh, two more market, two more market, two more market. Just push up, monkey, trust, trust. Can you flash here? Can you just chuck a flash? Listen, uh, if you want to push through this smoke, you always, but you always need to clear this angle here. Dep depending how the smoke is placed. But most of the times, the smoke is going to be placed like this. Wait up, how the fuck I zoom in? Like this, and it's not gonna cover that angle. You're not gonna see it. Like if I wanna push through this smoke with a flash, we need to check this angle and then go with a flash. We need to peek out a bit. Too many, you know, things can happen right now. Yeah, I'm talking. Oh! <clears throat> Unlucky. Yeah. No. I mean, it's not unlike. What rank is this? Uh, Ascendant two. It's hugs. Yo, brother, how are you today, man? I got a, an open butthole. <sighs> My team is penetrating me in, in solo queue. You guys wanna go A this round? Sure. Their gecko has their ult for retake. Yeah. You think we could bait it out? Yeah. If we bait it out, we just run. Yo, if we get side, can we get aggressive towards the alley? Oh, nice, nice. I'm gonna flash out of the smoke. My bad. Oh, he's close. I fell asleep. 
Fuck. I bet. Nothing better that you can do. Gecko was a better aimer. I'm gonna flash out this one. I bet. There's nothing better you can do there. He, he, he never played that angle there like, uh, you know. That guy just... Insane shot, man. Try to beast my... Yeah, yeah. Clove, could you smoke mid for me? It's on mid. <laughs> I, lo I love how they, you know... After playing so many rounds and... and, and, and like... I don't know. I think I was going to yeah, it's okay. No, I guess I guess I'll go to the On top yeah. mid. I go snatch on to mark when you guys are ready. Okay. Bro. Uh, hey, can you smoke it again? I don't know. I, I, this smoke is very sussy, yeah, man. What the fuck is this smoke? Cypher dead. Listen. One very important tip for Sunset. Whenever you're splitting the B-Set or pushing the B-Set through market, whoever is running last through the doors should close the doors. If the doors are still active and you can still use them. Cutting off one angle from which you can die, cutting off one rotation point from the enemies, and having easier time to focus on the enemies in front of you. Like, tell it to your... I mean, I mean even... In this scenario, his KO is coming behind him. KO is here, he is here. After that, Cypher kill. I'll close the doors. KO still has the time to crouch underneath the doors and go in. I mean, to just run, to be honest. Very important. So that you're not ending up in some kind of a stupid sandwich. You see my song for you, Charlton? Yeah, I saw it, man. Like, uh, I just didn't... Uh, usually when I read people... I instantly turn off my stream and uh, um, I, I instantly focus on work, you know? I don't I don't chill in stream that much, so yeah. Thank you, thank you, man. Dude, I won enemy that thing without internet, bro. I'll send you the link. No, no, I, I already... You know, actually send me the link on Discord. Through the private messages. I... I saw some clip that is like 5 seconds or something. Uh, not, nothing else. Is he mid? Where is he? <laughs> Lost hair from Radiant Lobbies or took a haircut? Both. <laughs> Both. Could smoke my troops. He's, <gasps> He's in their spawn. Should we all give him one of your ones? Just to be okay. funny. <laughs> Listen, attacker side problems. First of all, uh, you need to know the reason why you're pushing the same site three rounds in a row and what to do in the fourth round. Second of all, map knowledge isn't really the best. Look at the videos that I've shared with you. Uh, third of all, uh, you need to focus more and read the enemies a bit better, definitely. Now, it's really hard for me on stream to tell you how to improve that. But after this word review, I'm going to share you one of my awareness trainings. Like everything in development can be practiced. Communication, mentality, attitude, awareness, decision, make everything. I'm gonna share one training with you. You're gonna do that training for like uh, two months straight. And we will see how much your information gathering has improved. And how much better you're reading the enemies. Uh, you're not really able to recognize your win conditions that good. And that's why I need to give you some kind of a training for that. Everything can be trained. I feel that your game knowledge can also be much better. You know, you definitely need to do a bit of self audit reviews to, to see how other players are playing a, a specific map. Uh, from time to time, you're wasting your utility for nothing. Chill a bit. If you can use one piece of utility for one task, it is always better. And please, 
for the love of God. Check every possible angle, every position where the enemies can be at a specific moment of time. You never, especially in the ascendant and immortal lobbies, and lower lobbies as well, you, you, in radiant lobbies as well, you never know what your team has cleared and what your team has didn't clear at that moment of time. Like I'm playing the game of Element with a full paranoia. Like if I if I didn't see some angle myself, if I didn't clear it myself, or I I didn't see it on the minimap being cleared by my allies, I behave towards that angle as if the enemies can be there at that moment of time. How to practice mentality? Maybe in one of the future VOD reviews I'm gonna explain that. The problem of, uh, you know, this problem of uh, map uh, and game awareness, uh, it's, it's, it's really hard for me to explain in, 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 less, than a, in less than an hour. Like PvK, you already got uh, one of the training examples for like map awareness, reading the enemies and that type of stuff. I have like 20 of those trainings. Uh, and all of these trainings take like, I don't know, one to two hours to actually explain properly, like what you should actually do and how to take the notes and stuff like that. And every training is different. So, you know, I, I, I really don't have like two hours to explain that topic right now. Of course. Chilling. And when it comes to mentality, I'll I'll try to cover that topic in one of the future world reviews because we still have a defender side. I have a coaching session in 40 minutes from now. We'll, we'll probably cover it in, in one of the future world reviews. Toilet time, I need to piss. Moment. Too much. Too much Pepsi Max, bro. Too much drinking bad for you. Hey, yo, man. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to... Tomorrow I'm going to the doctor to check my throat. Hopefully, I don't have a cancer. That would that would be really nice. If I go to on a, on a vacation, knowing I have a cancer, bro. Fuck you, Valorant gods. To be honest. Now, <clears throat> uh, yo, Inito, thank you, man. Uh, defender side of sunset. On defender side of sunset. Once again, B set is your number one priority, default bomb site. I've explained that multiple times. Uh, A set is your second priority. Uh, and your highest priorities on this map is always keeping the market control and top mid control and having the information whether or not enemies are there. On a defender side, we want to play a bit faster rotations. And, you know, in some of the rounds, we want to flank, lurk, try to pressure the enemies. And when we, when, it's, when we see an opportunity for that. And what we also want to do on Sunset 
is you always need to fight aggressively for some area of the map. Like you need to deny something from the enemies. Like we need to play a semi-aggressive playstyle. We cannot sell the A-main and B-main control and mid-control for nothing. Like we always want to contest the enemies, not really in a 50-50 duel or a one versus one fight, but just at least getting the info whether or not the enemies are there before they actually execute the side and pressuring the enemies a bit. Now in the first round, you should always play in the market. Basically, classic light shield, two satchels, close the market doors. If the enemies are pushing A, do a fast rotation on A. If the enemies are pushing B, we can instantly use a satchel, try to fuck up the enemies as they're pushing in. Or we can play instead of the enemy smoke. When the enemy duelists are executing a site, we can aid the choke point and contest the duelists into a, you know, into some kind of a fight and isolate them from the rest of the enemy team. You guys, this mid is open. I can pick it up right now after I close this. I would never, ever, in my life, prioritize the boombot over the satchels. Satchels are much more versatile piece of utility. They have much higher value for you as a race player. There's so many more things that we can do. So many things that we can do with the satchels compared with the, to the boombot. So, fuck the boombot. In the first round, satchels are always more important. Nothing be main yet. One A man. Oh, One A man. Yeah, I'm coming. When you're rotating through top mid, please f check all of the angles. Like, uh, especially if you're playing against the Cypher player, there's always gonna be some fucking rat lurking in the mid. Like, make sure that you properly check, you know, jiggle peek this, check this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, and then move forward. And even when you're moving forward, Try as soon as possible to reach this angle so that you're isolating duels, duels, 1v1 duels with the enemies. And even when you're pressing here, you need to be aware that if you don't see all of the enemies on A side, there might be one enemy trying to backstab you. What the? He just runs in. He's just running in. Oof, he didn't just check all of the nice, nice. This corners. Is the Listen. Ch chill a bit. Chill a bit. Like, if your teammate died, and you were not there to refray that teammate, and you don't have an easy kill in front of yourself, wait a bit. Let the enemies plan the spike. Wait for the rest of the team to rotate. Running end. Just on side. Nice time. We are still... 3 versus 4. We can win this round together. But you running out in the first round... Dying alone, or taking one kill and then dying, is not the solution. Like, if you die right now, so you kill an omen and you die immediately, for an example. Only God knows if your jet and chamber will be able to retake this site. You have a nade, you have a boombot. Two extremely useful pieces of utility to retake the A site of Sunset. Like with a nade, we can easily do some kind of a nade to pressure the enemies on the site. Like where the nades can splatter, like, uh, you know, clear this spot, this spot, this spot. Like, uh, we can use a boom bot to reveal the enemies in the A main area of the map. Stuff like that. Like, I'll focus here more on the safety rather than trying to get some kind of a fight immediately. There's a tunnel though. Especially peeking out from the smoke like this. Bro. Like, enemies could have been there. Could have been here. On the right side, left side. Like, this was a suicide. No, I suicide, yeah. literally. 60 omen hit to link. Last player nice. Omen hit 60. You should have played this round more disciplined and chill a bit. Like, you're a very valuable asset with your utility for the retakes. When you have your utility, obviously. If you if you if you're not able to refresh your teammate in less than one or two seconds, that refresh potential is gone. 
Stay alive. Play a bit slower. Wait for the rest of the team to rotate. You don't need to make some kind of a game decision immediately. Now, in this second round, only God can tell us where the enemies are going to go. Usually, when I play the raise, what I buy in a second round, if I lose the first round, is a shorty with a satchel, and I'm going to play in the market. Closing the market doors, and if the enemies are pushing b side, I'm just going to try to kill one enemy with a nade, with a satchel and shorty, trade myself for the kill, building my ultimate points, allowing my teammates to have easier time winning that round, and also, like, uh, damaging the enemy's economy. And that's it. Moki, go, go A. He wants you to go A. Because Clove can't smoke both sides if you're playing on A. This is also okay. I mean, like... We're flanking channel. I cycled A. I'm done. I'm done. I could A. Watch your tiles. Oh, okay. Spike planted. Oh, let's just wait for him. Let's just wait for him. I mean, in this round, going for a, this Lurk flank... Whatever, like, personally... What I would have done in this round... Is the following. Like, fuck the claw. You know, I'll close the doors, let her do whatever the fuck she wants to do. I'll play here, wait for the enemy jet to dash in, use an 8 here, use a satchel towards the jet, try to delete the jet. Maybe I'm gonna die, maybe not. If I don't die, I can pick up the gun from the jet. Contest the rest of the enemies, help my teammate on the site, and that's it. Nice haircut. Yo, nice, nice. thank you, but Pudge. Come, come. That person CT. No way, this. Oh, they're all, like all in CT. Three of them in CT. Whatever. Eco round. I'm not gonna speak about it too much. What if they hit eh? I'll play here with you. If you want, look, like, sit right here. And if you hear them, right click them. Uh, this game decision to play Ace right now is uh, fine. Like, uh, in the first round, enemies went A. In the second round, they went B. They're kind of developing, you know, they developed a bit of a A-B pattern. Uh, with the Gecko ultimate, uh, I don't know. When I have the Gecko ultimate, usually I push the B site if I'm playing against the Cypher because, you know, it's an easy kill. But uh, I did notice in ranked environment that uh, when people have a Gecko ultimate, they usually finish onto the A side. Because if you take the elbow control and you use the Gecko ultimate, you know, you're usually gonna tag uh, one player like on the site that is hiding behind the site or in the CT or in the in the A short. So this gamble that he's doing right now is fine. But we cannot sell so much of the A main control. We need to pressure the enemies a bit. Like, listen, here. We have a claw, we have a KO, and raise. What the fuck are we doing, bro? I know enemies are playing a bonus round, but so so what? Claw, brother, can can claw day day? Can, can you give me a one way smoke? Ko, can you hold a pop flash here? And you just go into the aggro peak from the elbow, take the full aim and control. Don't allow the enemies to take this at all. Done. Smoke smoke replenished. Ko can rotate, you can rotate, Claw can stay alone here, guarding the aim and position. Flash, not swing You guys are gonna get Gekko ulted. Oh, you're right. Oh yeah! Monster on the loose! That's towards A. This was so fucked up. So fucked up. Also, here. Bro. Why, why are you going out from the site? You're playing Raze, you're not playing a, uh, an agent in a wheelchair, such as Cypher. You're mobile, you know? So, uh, okay, Gecko ultimate is coming through the elbow. Why don't we try to destroy the Gecko's ultimate? L look, look at the range in this area of the map. Like, Gecko needs to go all... There. do this. You know, like, you, you will destroy the Gecko's ultimate. I would have destroyed... The ultimate here. Okay, you don't want to destroy the ultimate. You're feeling afraid. It, it's not going to tag you up here. Like, most of the times, you'll be able to dodge it. Maybe you can play here. Gecko jumps. You jump down. Dodge the ultimate. Pressure the enemies with an aid, with the utility. Push them back. Well, why are we selling the whole site for free? I just play retake. I just 
club just got a con from the club. Cypher's low. Abby. I'm low, I'm low. What's that shit called? Link. He kills me? Wait, Omen is still alive? I'm 120. Oh my Jeez. god. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. After, after selling that bomb site in the way that you did, nothing else matters, literally. Like, there was absolutely no re reason to sell the bomb site uh, like he did it. Like, we could have easily destroyed the Gekko's ultimate. Like, basically, I don't know, when, when you're doing a Gekko ultimate, like, if you notice that the Gekko is using the ultimate from here, or here, through the elbow, and you're playing elbow, uh, most of the times, you will have the time, you know, you will have enough time to just kill that ultimate. And if you're playing set raise, you know, when the Gekko ultimate is coming towards you, apply the satchel, if you don't kill it, you can try to dodge it with the satchel. Fuck it. I don't know, I, I feel that we sold so much fucking space for nothing. And we're we're playing KO 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 raise and and, and, and a claw. KO could have just played with a pop flash here. Do a knife for the gecko ultimate to cancel the gecko's ultimate. Like, I don't know. We sold too too you sold too much space, man, in this round. I was scared that someone would follow the ult and kill me while I destroy it. But the problem is, Gekko used the ultimate so early on, and that ultimate is so fucking fast, it was impossible that someone is gonna... gonna follow that ultimate. But there was absolutely no way, man. Like, Gekko used the ultimate from the, from the spawn, basically. You guys are gonna get Gekko ulted. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah! My monster on the loose! I don't know, man, like, I... I'm not a Usain Bolt, man. Like, you know, I cannot follow that ultimate. Sorry, I just play retake. <coughs> I just club, just got a count from the club. You know? B lobby. Nothing good. I'm gonna start suppressing B after this one. Rain is on site. Get on site. Nice, good shot. Spike planted. Nice, nice. Exactly. When would it be good to just back out of the site and retake? Uh, if enemies have some really strong piece of utility, that you cannot stop at all. Uh, there's no, no, there's no way to stop the enemy's push. Breach ultimate, fade ultimate, uh, killjoy ultimate. You don't have, you, you cannot destroy it. Fuck, play the retake. Five v five. Don't, don't stay on the bomb site. Uh, if enemies are playing an eco round or hull by round, and uh, like uh, you don't need to necessarily risk your life to defend the site, okay, you can play a bit more passively and play a retake is okay. Uh, you have some really good piece of utility for the retake: Killjoy's ultimate, Fade ultimate, Breach ultimate, uh, anything basically. Raise ultimate as well. Okay, you know. You can play a bit more passively, like you don't need really to risk your life for defending a site, especially if you're playing alone. You know, those are some of the scenarios. I can flash out for you. One more thing that I've noticed is like uh, this happened for you already like four or five times when you're switching through the weapons. Like, a lot of times what happens for you is, like, uh, you're switching the weapons, and you do this. Like, you peek out before your weapon is actually ready to shoot. Like, take the weapon, now go for the peek. I can smoke for you guys. What do you guys want to main? main yeah. Ooh, we saw the guy there. Trip on us. No I have another smoke okay. for defuse. Bro, we are not getting through this. Alright, I'm gonna oh. Ready? You're already right click flash. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm right clicking. Three, yep, two, ready. one. One enemy remains. No, I win. Nice, right. Good, very good, very good, very good, very good.
gonna hit. Good, 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 good team play. Loved it, loved it. Okay, now it has been four rounds. So what can we conclude from the first four rounds to make a better game decisions on the defender side to punish the enemies? Uh, enemies are following AB AB rule to the core. Every single round they're doing something different compared to the previous round. So right now the highest chances are that the enemies are going to push either A site or mid. So we can start a round towards the mid, take the aiming control and that's it. Second thing, a second information that we have about the enemy's playstyle, they're only playing as five together. No one is lurking, no one is flanking. So we can do faster rotations and maybe take even more space from the enemies from behind if they're pushing aside. But also, what we have learned is that our teammates are not capable of stopping the enemy's push and defending the bomb sites, And that is why I would never go for the flank or lurk if my teammates are not able to delay the enemy's push enough so that my flank and lurk actually works. So, I would just be doing faster rotations and obviously like we need to pressure the enemies more towards the main areas of the map. I'm just throwing my knife deep and just run back. I'm gonna try to delay them with a nade too. Grenade! Yeah, then I saw nothing B. Uh, here. Okay, we got bamboozled a bit by the knife. Uh, doing this nade, absolutely fine. Removing the dart here, absolutely fine. But what I would have done, instead of running back all the way onto the bomb site, I would have done the boom bot to pressure the enemies so that my teammates in elbow have easier time killing the enemies and I want I want to distract them a bit. And also, I've I would have used this trip from the chamber to peek the enemies and to try to kill them. Like there was no reason for you to self, once again, so much map control and to go all the way back onto the site. Here. Everything that you did here, after removing the dart, not a good game decision. We had a tripwire, which allows us to get an easy kill on this Reyna. We can go for a Ferrari satchel peak, destroy the Reyna. Uh, we have the boom mod to pressure the enemy so that the chamber and jet have easier time defending the elbow and maybe peeking the enemies on the contact of the boom bot and enemies. Create the opportunities for yourself and for your teammates as well. Just on Chopper, chopper jet. Fucking uh, Rambo. Just on sight. Just on sight. Uh, please uh, don't get debated by the wingman. Like, uh, even if the wingman is carrying the spike, but there is like 90%, like, there is more than 20% of chance that the enemies are gonna peak a specific angle while the wingman is carrying the spike. Fuck the wingman, focus on holding the angle, and unless you're absolutely safe to destroy the wingman. Like, I don't know, if you're playing. Let's say, CT, and Wingman is carrying the spike and you're here. Yeah, destroy the Wingman, reset, and then recontest the enemies. But here, being fully open from the elbow, this was mega dangerous, man. You know? At the end of the day, in this scenario, like, let the Wingman plant the spike. Who cares? We're five versus three. <clears throat> nice German haircut, Papito. Bro. We're five versus three. We know that two enemies are in the elbow. You know, we have a boom bot satchels like. That's on site, huh? Omen is on the site. We can kill the Omen easily alone. Claw can smoke the, the elbow it's position. Elbow. I don't know. One enemy. Wait, okay, okay, okay. Can you knife there. this for early info? If they're here, I'm a satchel in. I'm not gonna satchel in. 
There's a huge beam, man. The market's open, I think. I'm trying to help you guys, man. Good kill, good kill. I'm closing door. But we're just not gonna fight. I don't know about you, man, but uh, here, I would be flying with the ultimate, man. I don't know. Like, basically, when you have the raised ultimate, the first opportunity you get to, you know, to win the round with that ultimate, and to just secure the round, I use that opportunity. Of course, I'm not going to use the ultimate if the enemies are eco hull by... If I have a huge numbers advantage, you know, I'm, I don't know, 3 versus 1 or some shit like that. But, uh, but we're just not gonna play. here, seeing like Raynang and Omen there, pff, I'm flying out, man. I'm taking. I'm actually, to be honest, here in this scenario, you don't even need to use a satchel. You can just use a the ultimate, drop it through the smoke, and probably you're gonna get a kill. There's a ton of time, dude. Yeah, blind for a minute. I, 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 I... Here, using the ultimate, was absolutely retarded after that kill on the Cypher. We have the true numbers advantage, 5 versus 3. Now, there is no reason to use the ultimate. But, while they were 5 versus 4, with a claw in the ultimate, it was worth it using the ultimate. No, Basically, you know, a lot of my game decisions are based on how much map control I have in what type of a scenario I am, like, uh, what are the numbers in the game, what is the economy of mine and the enemies, like, you need to adapt on the spot. Yeah, you, 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 you can never tunnel vision in a game of Valorant on one specific task. Try to suppress it, actually. If I suppress it, it goes away, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can suppress it. Hey, hey, hey. I didn't get hit. I didn't get Gekko. Oh, Rena's lit. Focus on the elbow. Rena's okay. the I'm the elbow. I'm holding me in. Uh, I don't know, man, like... This nade here... Was a bit of a waste, to be honest. Like th th there was ev like here. Look at this. I didn't get. I didn't get Gekko. Like this nade here. Okay, we're gonna delay the enemies, push a bit, whatever. But uh, after you do that nade, I'll, I'll like when I'm defending the A set of uh, Sunset. I'm always more focused. on uh, defending the elbow position instead of defending the A short. Like, it, when you lose the elbow on Sunset, like, enemies just have so many different opportunities to fuck you up on the bomb site. They have more openings, essentially. Like, fuck the A short. But especially if you have a tripwire for that uh, trademark or, I don't know, like, uh, one teammate watching the A short. Uh, If, if it gets too hard, just fall back. We can replay it. I don't know, man. Like, uh, listen. We never aggress the enemies in the B main area of the map. If I peek like this. If, if it gets too hard, just fall back. We can replay it. And, and I don't see a cypher camera. I would try to go for some kind of a cheesy play and go behind the box. But the only reason. Why in this specific round, I would not be going for some kind of a play like that, 
is because enemies are equal in Halbai. Whenever enemies are equal in Halbai, you can focus more on the long range duels, abusing the gun advantage that you have, refresh potential, and playing a bit more passively. At the end of the day, you can just play a 5v5 retake and that's it. They're broke now, though. We can hold, I think. Oh, no, you're, you're right. Out of my way. I scan nothing. I think I heard one B man. It's mid. Can I just ask one question? What the fuck is this tripwire here? What is this tri This trademark is for what? Exactly? Like, like this whole match, your chamber had one of the worst trademarks I've seen in my fucking life, literally. E e every single one Smoke of them. Okay. Ooh, that's gonna be progress. Ah, oh, unlucky. They're gonna rotate. You have smoke? Oh, wait, no, they have, they have, they have bombs. Oh. Cypher's behind you guys, I'm pretty sure. Market, market. Okay, man. Okay. Here in this round, like uh, okay. th 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 this is actually really good. Cypher's dead. They're gonna rotate. Yes, yeah, smoke. Oh wait, no, they have they have bombs. They have bombs. Oh. Cypher's behind you guys. I'm pretty sure. Marker, marker. Marker, marker. One enemy. I mean, uh, like, literally. Like, you, you just got Omen in this round. Like, like that... That play of the enemy Omen... Was... Ballsy as fuck, man. Like, this shit works... Uh, one out of ten times. Basically. Like, uh, This is just unlucky, man. Especially, you know... Two of your teammates with a full buy weapons are not able to kill an omen that is stuck on the site. Like, what the fuck? Hear them? I'm gonna knife once I hear them, or if it's just been too long. Like, no. Yeah, remember. One enemy. Is that pretty? Sure? Yes, yeah, smoke. Smoke. Gets mid. Drop smoke. Smoke somebody. Oh. I'm gonna. Right. Smoke's here. I'm doing my thing. Driving hard. Oh, yeah. So, more suppressed. Nice. Spike down no A. Way here, right? oh. I, 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 <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, if you're going for these flanks and lurks, like, uh, As I said, with the teammates that are not capable of defending the bomb sites, it is better if you're doing the fast rotations to the CT as fast as possible and just connecting with them as fast as possible. Like, uh, first of all, picking the orb here behind this smoke without the information, whereas one enemy was a bit dangerous. You know. So yeah. more suppressed. Second of all, nice. Spike down. I guess that you probably got a bit. I don't know. You probably run here because you saw four enemies tagged, but. And you gamble that the omen is there with them as well. I don't know. Maybe I would. Maybe I would have played this, this round in the same way that you did. I don't know what to tell you. Like. Uh, Maybe I would have done the same thing, but generally, you will notice in my gameplay that I lurk and flank behind the enemies only one round per match, maximum. And I really make sure that, that I pick a round that is good for that specific play. But a really good rule of and habit like in these Ascendant and Low Immortal lobbies, where you never know with what type of a gorilla you're playing, and... Uh, how capable your teammates are at defending the bomb sites is to simply do the fast, safe rotations through the 
CT, and that's it. But here, even if you completed this rotation, this flank, lurk, whatever, only God knows if your teammates on the site are going to stay alive. Like this whole match, they were just selling the bomb site, you know, dying instantly. I don't know. Like with this type of teammates, you cannot do this type of place. Throw a knife. If they do something, or if they just Watch. if it's too slow, then I'm gonna you you're gonna just... get cleared by Gecko. Or... I know, I know, I know. I just want them to nope. use the retail early. I'm throwing my knife. Scanned one. One, one, one turbo. One out turbo. One close mid. Smoke there. I might open this door to be honest. Uh, bad game decision uh, here. It would have been much better if you just rotated the top mid, pressure the enemies from top mid together with your teammates, sell the B site, kill the enemies on mid, and retake the B site. Fuck it. Like on the fast rotation maps, uh, uh, you should always prioritize team play over anything else and try to. Support your teammates in the first contact between enemies and, and, and them, like... Literally... Opening the doors here, like, just, just gives an enemy another opportunity... To fuck you up... Into a... One versus one fight... And you give the enemies another opening to... Just, you know... Rotate, lurk, flank, whatever. Nice, nice. Cypher's there too. One enemy remaining. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm Spike is mid. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I'm losing focus and losing... Real life health points. 30 seconds left. Anyone have any speeds? I may have like fingers. So. We are... Two versus one. Our chamber is top mid. Enemy jet is unknown. We are marked. What do we do? We close the doors. We play mid with the chamber. Rotate over top mid. You're watching this. Chamber is watching this. And that's it. Or, we're closing the doors. Telling the chamber to go tiles. Chamber is watching this. You're watching mid. Isolating the angles in a proper way, playing refray game, and that's it. The worst thing right now that you can do is watching the B side and isolating one versus one duels. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't know where the jet's at. By closing the doors, we isolate the angles, play smart, that's it. Should I just group up with Oh, there, there. Wait, wait for me. Last player oh, what the f This fight, I would have never allowed to happen. In this type of scenarios, you need to communicate with your teammates. Like, uh, whenever you are two versus one, you always want to, you always want to find like uh, some kind of a way how you can play a proper refray game with that ally, and to isolate as many angles as possible, from which that. Uh, remaining enemy can kill you. Like playing here, playing here, playing here would be a suicide. The best idea was just to play it in this position, defend the spike, defend this angle, two angles, two opportunities, that's it. That angle? Do you want me to smoke for you? To hide yeah. in it? Smoke behind me. No peeking! Not 30 seconds there. left. Better wrap around CT. Can I make noise? Be behind you as well. Oh my! Oh my! Oh, I should. <clears throat> Do it. You hear me? Uh, there's a couple to be. Careful, eh? 
Oh wait, I hear, I hear, I hear. CT. Dinner's fine. Nobody beam. Nobody beam. Oh, yeah. Monster on the loose. Nice. Uh, Great uh, it. Okay. Gecko's all A, Gecko's all A. You gotta be Link. Yeah, yeah, wait for me, wait for me, wait for me. Nice, nice. Just still hey, left, Shimmer. I, I know A. exactly A. Two, two elbow, two elbow. Shot in a spike. spike planted. Should I ult this round? Double satch line. Rin has uh, probably elbow. I would have altered here already, man. Uh. This is worth it. Like, I, I don't know, man. Here, once again. Like, okay, we're retaking the site. One enemy is planting the spike. As the enemy is planting the spike. In a... Two versus three scenario. Going from A short. I would have just done this. We killed one enemy that is planting the spike. Maybe take a kill here. Allow our claw to push in. That's it. It, it is worth it in this scenario to use the ultimate. I'm a fight for this. No, I'm a fight for this. Oh, Cypher came like Come get your work, come on. The main mistake that, you were ma that you, your, your whole team was making on a defender side is the same mistake that you made. That enemies made on a defender side as well. Like on... On Sunset, it is a really good habit to fight for the aiming area of the map a bit more aggressively instead of playing passively. Fighting for the choke point with a one-way smoke, KO flesh, KO knife, nade, molotov, prowlers, etc, etc. Playing this passively is just stupid on this map with this type of a team composition. We can play for retake, guys. Nice. Dude, I keep getting timing, bro. Wait for us. Wait for uh, us. Omen is... Might be... Omen's not pushing up, please. Spike planted. Omen's in the corner. Omen's in the corner. Like I never... Uh, may I ask, like, uh... In the corner. Omen's in the corner. How did you swing this angle like I never... and this angle while the enemies are pushing the A set and potentially they're already on the site? What? Bro, well, we're all dying to get the res. Ultimate, maybe? Ultimate? Last player uh. stand. See Last player uh. stand. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> we're not gonna watch the overtime because we already covered the enormous amount of topics uh, at the beginning of this uh, uh, VOD review in the first one hour. Uh, I'm gonna show you one training that you will perform for the next like two, three or four months. Uh, and I fully believe that with that training and with all of the things that we cover during this water review, you will easily get to Immortal 3 until, I don't know, 1st of September, basically. Like, uh, you're pl playing really well. Your mechanical skill is on a level of immortal players without any problems. But your decision making obviously needs to be better. As you said, your game sense needs to be better. Like you need to read the enemies a bit better and basically like uh, take better notes during your gameplay. Uh, and we will focus on fixing that until... Actually, not 1st of September. Like I think you're going to get the Immortal 3... Probably like in Episode 8, Act... And until episode 9, Act 1, you should be able to get uh, Immortal 3 easily. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm kinda dead. Like, my throat is not doing well. 
we will discuss uh, everything else through the private messages. I'll hit you up as soon as I finish the VOD review uh, stream. And we will talk about uh, what type of training you're going to be doing, uh, how to apply all of these tips and stuff like that. Uh, for all of you guys that were watching this VOD review, thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a subscribe, you know, join the Discord server, all of that good stuff. And uh, uh, I will see you in the next VOD review. Thank you very much.